I allegedly have five minutes. I'll try to keep it to that, but probably may go over. Seems uh, okay. Also awesome to be in San Francisco. I'm not here that often anymore, and it's always fun. Um, so what we're going to do is, I don't know if you've seen like the Angular uh, demos, but there's usually like two guys that are like play acting a thing. We're basically going to do that. Um, so For so, Angular components? Ah, it's, uh, mm, that's. <laughs> <laughs> so, Godfrey. Yes, Yehuda. Uh, so, Jeff, our designer, made us this new, fancy new sign in page. Uh, right now, it's just a mock up, but I would like you to try to make it work. Um, as you can see, when you click on the button, let's click it. Uh, it refreshes the whole page. It would be great if you could not do that and have it disable it instead and just let the new user know it's doing the work as it's as you're clicking on it, as it's submitted. That seems great. Let's take a look at the HTML. Whoa. <laughs> as you can see, the HTML, huh, I see. This is basically <laughs> copy from the bootstrap site. I guess our designer didn't do a very good job. But OK, that seems pretty standard. We can do this. Uh, you know what? I bet if you look at this thing, if you add the disable class, on it, ah, I see that it is already doing what we want. So we just have to do that in Ember. It seems easy. So I guess we have the button here. Let's move that into a component so we can attach behavior on it. Um, I guess so. Staff just decide to upgrade my Ember CLI right before <laughs> the demo. <laughs> if it doesn't work, you know the blame like. staff. Okay. Amber generate component. Uh, I guess we'll call it my button. Whoa. <laughs> it okay. So now I guess we can basically copy this line and then add that to the my component template. Uh, I guess we'll reinvent that. And I guess we'll change this to yield. So on the invocation side, we'll change this to basically say my uh, my button sign in my button. Okay, seems like that should work. Let's see. Oh, hey, as you can see, after refreshing the page, the button is still here, but now it's blue. <laughs> Hmm. Ah, I can see that there's an extra wrapper here. Let's see the CSS. Ah, as you can see, our selector, uh, our designer have made us some CSS that requires um, the button to be directly nested under the form, and now we have an extra wrapper inserted by Ember that doesn't work anymore. So I guess I would have to remove the wrapper. Hmm. How do we do that? I guess. I can go into the JavaScript file and maybe I can type like tech name button. Maybe that does something. And ah, as you can see, now I have a button inside button. <laughs> Great. So that is that is more or less working, but I guess we should um, move the rest of the stuff to here. So I guess we need the classes. Let's copy this thing. Ah, but it actually takes an array, so I guess I can't copy it. So button. I think you could probably get away with making a string, but. OK, let's try it. <laughs> <laughs> I love trying things, that's things that we didn't try before. Should not make it an array, probably. <laughs> OK. Uh, maybe, ah, we have an ARIA role. I think there's an API for that. Aria roll button, and now we have a type submit. I think you can do attribute bindings, maybe type, and then I guess you need to have a type submit. So honestly, while we were preparing this demo, I, we had to look up at some of these things. <laughs> <laughs> OK. Uh, I think maybe that worked. Okay, yeah, yeah so that, that worked. Was, that, so that was great, but no. <laughs>
Okay. I'm sorry. I should have stopped you before you got all the way through because that is actually pretty terrible. So, uh, no. So, obviously, you can get the job done with this, and once you do it, it works fine. But I want to show you a uh, Glimmer component, which is specifically targeted at making this better, in addition to a lot of other things that you might have read about. So, first of all, I'm going to type Zoh my God because. Uh, that's an alias for git add dot and git stash and git stash drop because I don't actually want to type all the things that are happening here. So, Okay, so now we're back to square one. So now we're back to square one and what I want to do now is um, basically do the same thing that Godfrey did if I had Glimmer components. Uh, I feel like I have to like, I don't Maybe know. quit the entire thing. Uh, just quit the entire thing. All right, seems good. Oh my okay. God. Okay, where are we? <laughs> Oh, okay. Good. So basically, we're back where we started from. So we're, we are going to have our application template, and it has a button in it. And I'm just I'm not going to bother with the generator. I'm just going to make a new thing, which is going to be called my button .hps, and I'm going to copy this into uh, here, and I'm going to change this to say yield. Save it, and then I'm going to go my button. So you can see that there, we're using an angle bracket uh, here as opposed to the curlies that we used before. Uh, we're going to say sign in. So first of all, I'm going to show you now that's going to work, and then I'll say what happened. So first of all, if we inspect, you will see that it worked, which is awesome. And basically, so first of all, that is a lot less work, which is great. Uh, yeah. Uh, sorry. So what is happening here? Yeah, so what's happening here? <laughs> so what's happening here is that basically uh, when you invoke a component with uh, curly braces or angle brackets, uh, we are basically changing it so that the top, the top level element is now the same as the thing that you typed in JavaScript, right? So basically instead of having you, turns out basically that we already have a way of describing all the things that Godfrey was typing before in JavaScript. It's called HTML. So we would like to use HTML to do that. Um, and basically angle bracket components, instead of making an uh, uh, element and then putting the layout, this thing inside of it, it basically replaces this with the layout that's inside of it. Um, which, by the way, if you uh, follow other frameworks, this is like what React does and unlike what Angular and Polymer do. So Angular and Polymer do roughly the, uh, the thing that Godfrey did and what Ember used to do, and React does more like this. And unsurprisingly, we like what React does here. Um, so that is cool. Uh, and I uh, remember we started out this whole project because I asked Godfrey to please uh, make it so that when you click the button, it does some stuff. And I would like to actually implement that. But again, I don't have a ton of time. So uh, don't actually. How do I get it? OK. Let's Godfrey's see. going to get it. OK, because we have limited time on stage, so I actually have prepared the demo for you. Um, let's see. So um, as you can see, the diff is not very really large. It's uh, no. As you can see, uh, whatever. We'll, we'll walk through it. Load on. I feel like you just type master, and it would be. Uh. There you go. Okay. So the diff is actually very small. We'll walk through it. Right. So basically, the, the, what's happening here is, first of all, we have the component here. And the component looks a lot like the component, a component that you would have written before. It has a property on it called is submitting. It has a click handler, which prevents default and sets is submitting to true. Right. And then if you look at the component that we created, it just has a conditional in it. If is submitting, then sending. Otherwise, yield, as you would have expected. So basically, this is pretty similar to what you might have written before. The only, ah, there is also a this, which if you're familiar with like uh, the change from bind adder, which happened in 111, it's basically the same thing at the top level here. right? Um, and the only really interesting thing that you would not have seen before is that you're extending from Glimmer component, which is the new kind of component that does this outer HTML basically represents the template as the outer thing. Um, and now if we reload and we click sign in, you will see that it will do the right thing as we expected. So uh, I guess the short, the TLDR of all this is that when you're refactoring from one template into smaller components, it's actually really nice to be able to copy and paste things. And Ember 1.x and 2.0 um, makes it somewhat annoying. Like every time you copy and paste something, you have to basically convert the wrapping element into a bunch of JavaScript things, which hopefully you remember, but maybe don't. Um, 
And the Glimmer component basically lets you just copy and paste. You can literally just like, as if it was a partial, basically. You can copy and paste as much as you want, and then everything works correctly, which is great. Um, obviously, there's a whole bunch of other Glimmer component stuff to do with like one-way data bindings and all that stuff. But for me, like my favorite thing about this feature is that it makes copy and paste refactoring much smaller. Um, so that's good. Uh, cool. So before we had to, well, we've, before the next talk, there's one more thing. Would you like to know about it? Yes, I would love to know about it. Okay. <laughs> um, so Mike told us about um, measuring performance in Ember, and we thought we'd just quickly mention that we are parallel to all the things. We are also Im working on improving the instrumentation, so um, you can follow along on this pull request number 12088. Um, but once we're done, hopefully you will be able to tap into a lot of these things just by doing ember.subscribe and then you can get like all the routes timing, all the um, maybe your um, user interaction and that would help you measure performance and also help you do analytics. Maybe you can dump them into Mixpanel or something. Um, so yeah. I, w I just want to say on this topic, like while we're implementing this thing, we are, we learned why a lot of people who have tried to do this in their own apps have not experienced a lot of happiness, uh, which is that there are many things that happen that are like important conceptually, like the route has actually the router has finished routing to this end state that are not exposed that well, um, and things like the router has aborted is actually not exposed at all. The reason we haven't implemented that yet is because it is just not exposed at all. Um, so part of the process is actually exposing it. So even if you have an awesome person like Mike working at your company doing this stuff, I think pr he will probably be very happy with us exposing the stuff that you need. Very happy. <laughs> so seems good. All right, awesome, thank you. Uh, finally, we would like to thank our client LinkedIn for funding basically, basically all, all of this work. And uh, so they're awesome. You should thank them for this work and uh, there will be more to come. Thank you.